Hey, it's Paul. We're going to be looking at the calendar module within Kendo UI. So as you can see, I've started out with a brand new Angular CLI project. And then all I've done from then is add the browser animations module because that's a dependency on Kendo UI and the calendar module to our imports, as well as adding the default theme to our styles.scss. Now that we've done that, we can add the kendo-calendar component to our app component.html. And you'll notice that the second we do that, we get this calendar and it currently is focused in on the 20th of May, 2017. Now that is today. We can set our own focused value. If we were to make a new date, for example, F date, of type date equal to a new date of something like 2010, 11, 11. We could inside of our app component, then add the focused date attribute equal to the F date property. And then now you can see that we are in this December, 2010. We're focused in on the date of the 11th. And if we select any of these dates using the 11th as an example, you'll notice that the selection goes red and the text goes white and that's the selected state. So we could do a similar thing, and I'm going to call this S date, if type date, which is a new date equal to 2010, 11, and this time it will be 12. If we change that to be value, now that's the value is in the selected date, equal to that S date property. Now you can see that the 12th is selected by default. We can also lock a particular date ranges because you might want a minimum date and a maximum date. And we can do this by hooking into the min and max attribute. So before we do that, let's quickly make ourselves a minimum and maximum date. So let's say min date, if type date is a new date. And maybe from 2010, 11, 11, to the max date of 2011, 11, 11. So it should be an entire year. We can therefore add the min attribute to be that min date and the max attribute equal to that max date. I'm going to remove the selected value for now. And now that you see, we only have these options from December 2010 to December 2011. The option to select today is grayed out because that's in 2017. And we only have the option to select one of these dates. Another thing that we can do is remove that left bar. We could say navigation is false. And when we do that, you'll notice that that left bar disappears. We can continue to scroll up and down like before, but now we don't have that selector to the left. If we wanted to hook into the change event, such as value change, we could write a function such as log value, pass in the date, which we will know is a date. And we can console.log the date. And now anytime the value changes, we do get that result. As you might expect, you can also hook into other things like blur, so if we had an on blur event, we could console.log blur. We would also need another component such as an input. And if we save that, if we selected a date and then selected the input, this classes is a blur event. So we've moved away from the calendar. Could also hook it into things like focus on focus. And we'll do the same for our blur, but instead we'll log on focus. If I click inside of the calendar, we get that focus log. If I click out, we get blur. If I change a value, we get that value as well as the focus event because we were blurred away from the calendar. Now we're back in here. So that's initially a focus. But if we click around, we don't get the focus because we're already in that context. And that just shows how powerful the Kindle UI calendar is. Finding good calendars is always a difficult thing when you're looking at different UI libraries. Kendo has definitely nailed it with this one. And if you'd like to see more Kendo UI components, hit that subscribe button. Let me know inside of the comment section below. And until then, my name's Paul and I'll see you very soon 
in the next video.